Yeah, there are, there are three main factors influencing um, early immune status and, and gut health in broilers. Um, the first of these is the chick itself and the fact that it comes from breeders that are well protected with respect to vaccines and general hygiene and husbandry at the farm. Um, the second is biosecurity at the broiler farm itself. Um, obviously this is becoming more and more critical. Um, and the third is the role that nutrition can play in supporting the immune system and supporting early development of the gut and um, limiting the potential um, incubation of pathogens in the gut. Um, it was about 15-16 um, years ago uh, a graduate student came to me who was actually in swine nutrition uh, and they wanted to test uh, what was the equivalent of an early weaning diet in pigs for young chicks um, which really has become known as specialized pre-starters today. And as part of that diet, there was a, uh, a quite a large dose of blood plasma and the results were quite dramatic. And um, since then, I've always had an interest um, in looking at the role of blood plasma in early nutrition and overall economics of, of broiler and poultry production. definitely seems to be an immune modulator, uh, which is a very difficult thing to measure. At the farm level, um, we see that in terms of feed efficiency. So there is a very practical way of indirectly measuring it. Whenever we feed plasma, we see an improvement of around five points of feed conversion. And that, um, I'm, I'm quite convinced, is um, a reduction in immune um, status of the bird or, or not overstimulating the immune um, responsiveness of the bird to pathogens or to vaccines today. We see a, a big range of feed efficiency out in the field across different um, global regions and a lot of that is due to um, immune status and the bird having to raise antibodies to, to various challenges. So. It seems that plasma can help reduce that um, energy cost. It's an, it really a net energy cost of maintenance for um, immune um, competence. And so, as I say, in very difficult to measure in, in direct terms, but the outward sign of that is five points of fee conversion or, or more than that, which the industry obviously is very interested in. It is a highly digestible source of protein and amino acids, so it plays a minor role in replacing um, soybean meal in, in birds under 10 days of age, which is a, an important uh, factor today. But the response you see um, to plasma goes way beyond there being a simple um, improvement in digestible amino acids. So it is this. Uh, it's the functional proteins that are in the plasma that are giving the underlying response that we see. Um, even though we're only feeding plasma from between 4 and 10 or maybe 4 to 14 days, um, the response is seen throughout the life of the bird and that's where the, the saving in maintenance energy comes in. Well, the main one in, in generally healthy birds, the main one is going to be feed efficiency. In all birds, it will be feed efficiency. But in birds that are generally healthy and have good immune status, um, generally good gut health, um, then we still see the response um, in terms of feed conversion. If you have a major disease challenge, uh, and this is where plasma becomes really interesting because the, the results are quite dramatic in terms of um, reducing the mortality that birds um, face with either bacterial challenges or viral challenges. So um, dramatic results when there is a natural disease challenge, 
um, but all the time there is that um, underlying um, saving in feed efficiency, which I think the industry is, uh, is most interested in. It's very well established in animal nutrition. Um, if, you, if you feed cats and dogs, you're buying cat and dog food, um, especially cat food, there's likely to be plasma in there. It's a highly um, digestible um, uh, protein for pet foods. That's, that's one of the main areas. Of course, um, it was picked up by the swine industry about 20 to 25 years ago and I would suspect that 90 to 95 percent of the baby pigs in the world are fed plasma uh, as soon as they're taken off the mother and given solid feed. Um, so it is well established in the, the animal industry per se. It's a relatively new um, technique or a new idea for poultry and the, the industry is relatively conservative in, in general terms, so it, it takes a few years for new ideas to be accepted, but um, we're, seeing, we're seeing acceptance now, and so I think there's a, a role moving forward, especially as we rely less and less on um, antibiotics and other pharmacological agents used to um, support health, that we have used to support health in broilers. I don't think it's a total replacement. It's not a, there, there will never be a single factor that replaces antibiotics. It will obviously be a, a multifaceted approach. Um, I think plasma, uh, you know, for the first 10 days um, has quite dramatic effects on, on gut health. Um, but it's along with other factors and it's interesting that they are synergistic. So using probiotics, for example, or essential oils, or betaine, butyric acid, they're all synergistic to, um, to using plasma. So it won't be the replacement factor, but it'll be certainly an important tool in our arsenal for replacing antibiotics.